Welcome to Unruly 3, father of three unruly kids. I'm not really. So now I'm going to start um, preparing the stretchers for this. So my brother also milled up, besides the 4-inch ones, some 2-inch thick boards. So I think I'm running these through at about 5 and a half inches. And then... After I run these through the table saw to cut them to length, I made a little sled and I'm trying to flatten them. They had a little bit of a twist in them, so I'm putting them on a pretty flat board there, trying to run them to the planer until I get them flat. And then I just cut them to length. And then I'm gonna just raise the blade up a little bit. I think this was a, an inch on this side. And then I might have did two inches or two and a half or something. I don't know on this side. And made the stretchers. Then I put them onto the legs and I just drew lines. Um, after I did some measuring to see how high I wanted them up. I put them pretty low because I want to put like some drawers underneath for some storage. So I have them really low to the ground. I think they're only about um, three inches up. Then after I was done, I labeled each one. Poked some... Um, I did some starts here so that my drill bits could go into the same spot and drilled them all out with the Forstner bit. Then after I did that I used my chisel and I got the corners nice and straight and square and once the corners were all square my stretchers had a pretty good tight fit. Alright then I'm Gonna start on the leg vise. Now I went on AliExpress, ordered a leg vise because I, I couldn't afford a bench crafted um, leg vise. So the directions came with absolutely zero. There was not even a paper in there. So here I am trying to decide, you know, how deep am I gonna put this? Trying to come up with some kind of idea. I did go on bench crafted and print out their, um, their directions, but again, mine have different measurements on it. So I'm really just, shooting from the hip on a lot of this but what I did is I kind of measured it out um, used my center punch and um, drilled out a bunch on here and so this one was actually with the leg but I'm gonna go ahead I did the same thing on the actual vice chop as I did with the leg and then using my new router plane I could flatten out the bottom then I clamped them both together and I drilled all the way through here this is where the um, screw is actually going to go. So this is going to be my screw going all the way through. And then after I got that all the way through, then I had, I didn't have a, this is where the collar is going to go. And I didn't actually have one that was big enough. So I used a hole saw here. And I went down just a little bit, just low enough so that the, the collar would be flush. And then I used my Forstner bit to do the rest of this to hog out the middle part. And again, I'm just going down so that the collar could be flush on here. And there's a little bit of persuasion and that's gonna fit in there for just fine. All right, now I have to go all the way through for my screw to go through. And I watched a ton of different videos online. Thankfully, there was some people who had some great videos on how to do this. Um, I'm not sure the number of different videos I watched, but as many as I could. But none of them, of course, did the this product. They did all the bench-crafted ones. Like I said, I got this off of AliExpress. I think in total I paid, I think it was $70 total, and that included shipping. It did take it a long time to get the shipping. But, um... Yeah, so I've had it sitting around, and the company, the name on it is T-Deer, but um, you'll see. Now I'm just doing the rest, the same part on the leg for the collar and, um, and the screw to go through. Then I just go ahead and screw the collar in. And for some reason, they sent pretty fragile bolts or not screws there. But 
here's kind of how it goes. And it's not as smooth as a bench crafted one. So it goes in and out. I do have it. It's not perfect. It's pinched a little bit, not smooth like the bench crafted ones you see online. But um, I got a, a good start going on my leg vise. So here I got a slab stitcher kit for Christmas and the bow ties that came with it were pretty skinny. And since I'm going into a four inch thick um, top, I wanted my bow ties to be much thicker. So I got a piece of the same board that I used for my, my leg vise chop. I had some extra on this and I'm going to just cut out a couple of these bow ties at the same size as the slab stitcher ones. So I took them over to my bandsaw and went ahead and cut these out. So overall I think the slab stitcher kit is pretty cool. Um, it definitely made these bow ties um, nice and quick and um, yeah I think I would recommend it. I kind of I like it. Here I'm just finishing out these bow ties. So how the slab stitcher works is you just have this template. I think Rockler sells something really similar. So the kit I got for Christmas came with the large bow ties and I think I got some walnut and some maple bow ties. But here I am just going through with my router and I'm going down to the first depth and then after I get this depth call cleaned up, I'm going to lower it down as low as the router goes and go ahead and go in all the way down as low as it will be. So you can see the bow tie there. Pretty slick little deal. And I lowered it as low as it goes. And then you do have to take a little chisel and square up the corners. So I've been having my daughter watch movies that were um, my favorites when I was growing up. So the latest one we watched was Dumb and Dumber, and she liked it. Um, boy, to me, it seemed like it was a lot funnier in high school, but um, yeah, it, it went over good. So once you get the corners all squared up on this one, then you just went ahead and put my bow tie in and hammer it down as it goes, then cut it off. I use the rest of this for my next one. Now preparing the top, I did have some couple little tiny pieces. It looks like this is an inclusion that had a little bit of soft wood to it. So I went ahead and took the my wood chisels, my wood carving kit and cleaned these out. Some knots here. Now this one had a little, did turn out so good. So I had this part, my wife also got this for me for Christmas, this Montana one. Now I already have the bow tie in that goes down really deep on this part, but to clean it up, I wasn't happy with the way the bow tie looked. So um, I went ahead and I'm gonna put a Montana one in this one. So on this one, you only want it to be as deep as um, the actual insert because I'm not going to be cutting any of this off. So see the bow tie is still underneath. You also have to do the same thing with this one is go into the corners and clean it up. Put some glue in it and then just tap it down all around. If it was by itself, I don't think it'd have too much holding, but that bow tie underneath is definitely going to help it out. All right, now I'm preparing to heal, fill a whole bunch of these cracks with some epoxy. So this is the end. It hasn't chipped since it's been been cut, so um, or it hasn't split any further. So I did some dark brown. And it is just, so this is a tabletop epoxy. I don't know if this is the right stuff to use or not. So it is gonna start filling in these holes and you see, then I use a toothpick, I push it down as much as I can again. 
and just let it soak all the way in there. And then I did take this around, fill in a bunch of these little holes that I had taken the carving, the wood carving chisels to, and fill any cracks or anything that I had. And then a whole bunch of sanding. All right, the top is getting ready. So after this, I have, I'm gonna start working on, let's see, I have the other end vise to do, and I'm gonna start final, um, finally finishing off everything else. Then I have a whole bunch of accessories, kind of like what they have on the, like I said, I got this these plans, I bought the plans from the Wood Whisperer. My plans, I didn't follow nearly very close, but um, get a scene here of how this is gonna be at the end. I don't know if you can hear that barking or not, but we got a new puppy. He is super vocal. He is part half Siberian Husky, half um, German Shepherd, and he is a talker. All right. Thank you guys so much for watching. If you have any comments or anything, please leave them down below. I'd love to hear from you guys um, or ladies. Thanks again.